Okay, so now I have a solid mass right here, okay? But what if I wanted to go back in the edit mode and I wanted to do something a little different here? I'm going to go, right, I'm going to go back to wireframe and I'm going to say that I want to put a hole through here. What if I wanted a hole through this square, this little rectangle I have? How could I go about doing that? Well, that's where another one of our tools comes into place. But before I want to do that, I want to show you something else. In addition to selecting uh, kind of like a, a face for masses, right, or a line, I can also see this point, and we're going to work a lot with these points. I can also drag these points up. And if I hold down shift, hold on, let me undo that, try that one more time. See how I can hover over a corner and I get these points? Once I click on that point, notice the gizmo comes up and I can also adjust that as well. So I wanted you to kind of see that ability that this has, all right? So let's talk about putting a hole in here. Now we've used a solid mass. Now we're gonna start working with faces. So notice what happens. Notice you had this what? You have this work plane tab up here. And if I have a work plane, I'm going to say set a work plane. When I click on that, notice it allows me to use a placement plane of a level one, level two, or a reference point. Well, what does that mean, right? So if I put a reference point in here, look how I can hover over here, tab, tab, and click that face, right? And now that face is somewhere that I can go in and do what? Adjust that face if I'm just adjusting that face. However, what if I said I wanted to do something a little differently, right? What if I want to actually draw on that face? How do I do that? Well, notice this is grayed out right now, but if I come over here and I click this, what ha watch what happens, right? It clicks it, that becomes live, but what I'd want to do if I want to, for instance, draw a line or draw a, sh a rectangle, Notice this comes to life right here. And I can either draw on an established work plane, like a level or a datum, or I can draw on a face. So I'm going to draw on this face. I'm going to click here, and then I'm going to go to this face, and I'm going to hover, tab, tab. I'm trying to tab and get to it. So I'm going to go to the side. And it can be tough sometimes at first, people. Let me try this one more time. I'm going to draw this and I'm going to say I want to draw on a work plane, right? And in this instance, to get on the work plane I want to get on can be really tough at first, right? So what's the best way to get on there? And we have to think about that for a second. How am I going to get on that work plane? Well, the best way is going to say to draw on a work plane. Somehow I want to pick that plane right? Because I'm not on it right now. I'm on an actual level. So I'm going to pause the video and I want you, I want to talk about something for a second. Okay, so we're resumed. So what we talked about, uh, just, just in context for the video, is that if I want to come here and I want to draw on a face, it can be challenging to select the face that's actually facing me. You see, I can do that face, and it seems to be picking every face except the one I want. Now, again, if I go to um, Hidden Line, you know, it's still not really giving me opportunity to choose. So here's what I want to do in this instance. I'm going to go to Level 1, right? And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say, draw a reference plane and put that reference plane even with that face. And now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to name this logically. I'm just going to call this Joel, okay? And then I'm going to put another one on the other side, okay? Because I know I'm going to need that as well. And so I'll go in here and I'll name this one Sarah, okay? So Sarah has her work plane too. And so then I'll go back to my 3D view. And now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go here to the wireframe function. And I'm going to say, right, that I want to draw on a face, but I want to put it on the Joel plane, right? And now I'm going to draw a little rectangle right there on that work plane, right? And then I'm going to say I want to draw a, a different shape. I want to draw a circle this time. 
and I'm going to go around here. I'm going to rotate around, and I'm going to say I want to draw on a face, and then I want to set that to Sarah. And now on the Sarah plane, you know, I'm going to rotate around, and I'm going to draw a, a circle, right? Okay, so now I've got that. And you're like, Joe, why'd you go through all the trouble to show us that? Well, watch what I'm able to do now. I'm going to go through here. I'm going to click this, and I'm going to click this. I'm going to hold down Control and click this. And then I'm going to see how I have to create form. Now I'm going to create a void form. And the void form did what? It created a weird little what? A weird little extrusion through this. Now you're like, how do you get rid of this work plane, Joel? Well, I can just turn it off. See how I can show the work plane I'm set to? Turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. So now I've shown a void through here. So those that create form is what's helping me do what I need to do. Okay, so I'm setting a work plane. I'm drawing on the face I want to draw through. Now you're like, well, Joel, it seemed like I could go into the other planes and pick those individually. Well, that is true. So if I go back to my wireframe mode, I can come in here and I can hover, tab, tab, and delete that void extrusion. You see, I just deleted that. You see how if I delete it in pieces, it'll delete anything. But if I want to delete the whole thing, I like to just hover, tab until I get the whole thing and delete it. But in this other instance, if I just wanted to draw on those other surfaces, notice that I can come in here and I can freeform draw and I can hover on that surface and now I can pick that, right? And now I'm drawing on that surface. Now it says, you see how it's saying it's off axis and it could create inaccuracies? That's very true. I like to draw on work planes, people. That's how I know I get things nice and flat on there. I just wanted to show you that you can kind of freestyle too, though. So in this other instance, I'm going to go in here again. And this time, I'm going to draw this polygon, this circumscribed polygon. And if I hover, wow, see how it's giving me trouble to try and draw on the surface I want to draw on? Let's try that one more time. So it can be very finicky, people, which is why I'm trying to show you, you want to do what? You want to draw on a face. I mean, you want to draw on a work plane if you can. Sometimes, though, you have to draw on faces when you have things going on. So now I'm going to, um, I'm going to try and do this one more time. Let's see. All right. So... And again, it's telling me it's a little bit off, but I'm able to draw here. And then I can come here and choose this, choose that. Now, I'm probably going to get an error when I try and do Oh, it didn't give me an error. Look at that. It was, it, it was kind to me this time. So now you could see how I could draw an odd shape hole in. So you're like, Joel, why are you bothering even showing me anything like that? Well, look, what if you wanted to create a light opening from the top here and have the light come and come through another hole. Will that actually happen? Well, let's see if it'll happen. Let's see if we can turn on a function once we hit finish mass, right? Is there any way for me to check and see if the light would work? Could I turn on the sun settings here? You know, we're going to get into that a little later. But what you're going to see is that what we can do is we can come in here and test the amount of light that would come in this hole and come out of this other hole. So again, an interesting function or feature that we can get a hold of in Revit. It's very helpful. We will get into that. I don't want to get into too much right now. We want to stay with the basics of massing. But what I'm going to teach you is how setting up a site and putting buildings on a site and putting your project then on the site, you can mass the buildings around it and then figure out how the light is going to bounce off some buildings and how much light is going to fall on your building in your windows and different places. So you're going to see how this is going to be a very helpful tool for you. So we're right around 10 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and stop this video. Then we're going to get back into another video and we're going to talk about showing free forms. We're also going to talk about revolving. So you're going to see how to revolve and we'll get into the use. Sarah mentioned something earlier. Um, she said a reference line. We're going to talk about reference line and what the difference between reference lines and planes are as well. Okay, so I'll go ahead and stop this video and we can have some question and answer.